This is what we're making today. It's a curve with real handles. You could even move it to control the curve. This is all done with this expression, great path. In particular, the tangents in this expression. It might sound a bit intimidating, but we'll walk through it step by step. Firstly, I'll quickly show you how this can be created with just keyframes. I'm making this on a square composition, 1200 by 1200. This is very important for later on. With this workspace, I have the timeline on the left and the composition on the right. I want to do it accurately, so I'll use some guides. To bring in your guides, go to the view at the top and make sure show ruler is ticked. You can then bring in the guides from the side. Right click on the guide to position it exactly on location. This is how you get accurate. So I bring in four guides, each of them 100 pixels off the edges. You can even do arithmetic inside the guide box, which is quite handy. Then select the pen tool at the top or simply press G. You can't draw on the guides because as soon as your mouse is on it, you're about to move the guide. So you just draw two dots anywhere but on the guides. Then switch back to the select tool or press V. Now select one of the points and move it to cross point of the guide. I also make the straw a lot smaller. If you have problem of selecting the vertices, make sure on your timeline you have the path of the shape layer selected, then you can select individual vertex. To make this a curved line, hold down your mouse left button on the pen tool and select Convert Vertex tool. Then hover over one of the points, you should see this mouse icon. Then you can drag out the handles from this point. If you press shift while dragging, the handles will snap to a degree. So that's basically it. You just need to add some keyframes to make this animation. If the guides are in your way, quickly toggle them on and off by pressing Ctrl or Command and semicolons. This is the basic animation with this curve, but let's make those handles. I'll keep it simple and won't stylize much. Make sure nothing is selected on your timeline. Draw two points with this pen tool. Drag one of the points to the corner. Again, you may toggle on and off of the guide simply by pressing Ctrl or Command semicolons. Break in extra guides if need to. Place them in the middle and snap other points to it. Select your handle layer. Press the anchor point tool or press Y. Then move the anchor point to the corner as well. Now all we need to do is to keyframe the rotation value of this handle layer. You just need to make it in sync with your curve layer. It's all about spending time to fine tune the animation. Once one handle is done, you can pre-comp this layer. Then you can flip the layer horizontally and rotate it by 90 degrees. Now you have the other handle working as well. To avoid making this video unnecessarily long, I'll just leave it here. But really, this is not my preferred way. What I want to do is to create real handles, so when I move it, the curve will be affected as well. So that's what we're doing next with expressions. We're going to start with bringing in some guides again. Each guide is 100 pixels away from the edge. Then bring in some no objects. Make sure to rename them properly so you don't get confused later on. I named them A and B. Track A and B to the corners. They should easily snap to those guides. To create a path, right click and bring in a shape layer. Change the layer's position to 0 and 0. Click this little arrow to bring in a path property. Hold down Alt or Option and click the stopwatch to bring up the expression window. Then click this little arrow to see a list of expression presets. We are after this path property and create path. Within the first square brackets are the point coordinates and the is closed attribute is to say whether the first and last point will be joined up. Replace the first square brackets with A and B and change is closed to false. You won't see anything just yet because we haven't told the path what A and B is, so we're going to do that next. Define A and B as variables, then pick with those variables to the position of those values. 
I think I've got two sets of square brackets here. We actually just need one. Now you can see the outline of the path, but we need to bring in the stroke property to make it visible. Also make sure your stroke size is not zero. I just want to quickly show you how to use the tangents to control the path. Create another no object. Change the name to out tangent. Then snap it to the other corner. In your path expression window, set another variable called out tangent 1. Then pick with this variable to the layer's position value. Then out tangent 2. I'll just set it at 0 and 0 for now. Then inside the out tangent bracket, just type in the 2 out tangent. Now you can see the path is curved towards your node object. So this is the real handle of this point A. Though this is working, I don't think this out tangent node object, or even setting out tangent 2 at 0 and 0, is mathematically correct. So what we'll do next is to develop our own debugger and get those accurate out tangent coordinates, then connect those nodes to our points. It might sound a bit complex, but just follow along, it'll come to us later. To make a debugger, I need to create the same path with just the traditional way. So just select the pen tool and draw two dots on your composition. They should be connected and create a path. Open up the path property inside your layer and use the select tool to drag the two points to the corners. If you have the guide, they should just easily snap two points. Now choose the convert vertex tool and on one of the points, hold down shift and drag out the handles. You can delete the field property in the shape layer so we don't see the field color anymore. And adjust your stroke size so it's more prominent. Don't worry about this too much, this is just part of the debugger and we'll make this invisible in the end. To make the debugger, we need to see some values. And the easiest, and I think the only way to see it is via a text layer. So right click and bring in a text layer. Open up the text layer until you see the source text property. The secret is when you pick with this to any other properties, you'll copy those values of the properties to the source text and output those values on the screen. Zoom in this, and on the bottom left corner, you can see those output data. What I want to get is the tangent value of this selected point. And if you don't know where to get those attributes, make sure to check documentation and also use AI. I've put a link to AE scripting guide in the description and also use AI like Google Gemini and ChatGPT. They're not always correct, but sometimes they are. Also, if you're new to programming, this part might seem a bit daunting, but do try to stay with me as I explain the expressions. So this code basically says, I want to read the path and inside the path, I want to read the intangents and out tangents. So I call those functions. You see the parentheses here, they're the functions. Then we'll return an array, also meaning a group of two numbers. And those numbers are the X and Y coordinates on your composition. Now to prove my assumption is correct, I can move one of the handles and see the change on the output data. I want to see the tangents of this point. So first I select the convert vertex tool again and click the bottom vertex. And on the top one, hold down shift and drag out the handles. Toggle the guides on and off by pressing control command semicolon and snap the handle to the guide. As we move the handle, we can see the path curving to the sides. That means our no object is connected to those values. So we can move the no object and the path should follow. We already have two out tangents layers. We'll bring in another two no objects and change their names to in tangents. Then simply copy the debugger's values to your in tangents and out tangents positions. And now in your path expression window, set up those variables with corresponding names and pick with each layer's position value accordingly. And finally, copy those variables to the square brackets of intangents and out tangents within this long expression.
I'm also going to tidy up the layers a little bit. I don't need the debugger text layer and the shape layer, so I could bring them to the bottom of the stack and disable them, or even make them into guide layers so they won't be rendered. Next, we'll be making a handle. So bring in an empty shape layer, change the name to something you like, and inside the shape layer, bring in an ellipse, give it a fill and a stroke, stylize it a bit. Mine looks like this. Press P to load up position and place it in the middle of the top guide. My composition is 1200 by 1200, so the position value should be 600 by 100. I also want to separate the X and Y value, so it will be easier to calculate their relations later. So I right click on the out tangent, separate dimensions, then do the same with my handles layer. Then I pick with the X and Y position of the out tangent layer to the X and Y position of the handle layer. But in the expressions, you need to work out how to bring the no object back to where it was. Next, bring in a shape layer. We we'll create a path between the handle and the top left point. Bring in create path expression. Change is closed to false. We could get a value of eight points by pick whipping it, but when you pick whip the handle, it will give you error. That's because we have separated the dimensions. We just need to pick whip the x and y value separately. Put them into a square bracket and separate it by a comma. Now you see the path is created, but it's off the right place. You just need to change the position of the shape layer to zero and zero. Bring in stroke to make it visible. Rearrange your layers if needed, or stylize it a bit if you wish. Now when you move the handle, you see the out tangent node is moving as well, but it doesn't look right as they're not moving in proportion. So what we really want to see is when this handle is in the middle, sort of on a diagonal line, the no object should be on it as well. So we need maths to work out the relations between these two points. Let's redo the pick whip again. So on the L tangent position, pick whip its X value to the X value of the handle. But we need the L tangent value to be a thousand, not 600. That's why we need a formula to bring it back to 600 and it should be a consistent formula that keeps their movement in sync. So let me create a variable called R, stands for radius. Yeah. Then the X position of the node object should be twice as the radius. We know the X position of the handle is 600, 600 minus 100, then times 2, that gives us 1000, and we can just call X. With the Y position, we'll do the same. First pick with the Y position of the L tangent, to the Y position of the handle, and then work out the maths. Now you can see these two are moving in proportion. We can add some keyframes to make this animation but I'm not going to spend time on this as this video is mainly about expressions. I also look about this animation so it plays on a loop. The last part is to make the other handle. We could duplicate the existing handle and again this is just to work out the relation between the two handles and use some maps to control it. On the second handle, I'll reset the expression of the X and Y position and set them right in the center of the composition, which is 600 by 600. When the first handle is at its default position, I want the second handle to be at 1100 by 600. And at the end position, the second handle should be 600 by 1100. We could easily work out that the second handle's X and Y position should be 500 pixels more than the first handle.
then all is left to do is to create a path between the second handle and point B. You can duplicate handle 1, which is a shape layer, then inside the expression just change point B and handle position, then you should have it. I have this project file on my Gumbro page, linked down below. Also in my project file, I have this animation set up. The process is just the same. Create some guides, create a debugger, and find out the in and out tangents, then connect them with some node objects. If you're interested, feel free to head over and take a look. And feel free to ask questions in the comments. I would really appreciate it if you could also like this video. That's all about it for today. Thanks so much for tuning in again. Until next time, happy editing.